What is up guys? Welcome back to our series here on understanding cleaning chemicals. I'm excited. This is video number three. Today it's all about the pH scale. What is it? Why is it important? But most importantly, how can you use it to your advantage to clean with confidence? So this is the pH scale. This allows us to measure how acidic or alkaline a solution is. It is a numerical scale from zero, count them up my friends, all the way to 14. Cerro 14. In the middle, we have distilled pure water with a pH of 7. Anything below 7 is considered to be acidic and anything above 7 is considered to be alkaline. The further you move away from 7, the stronger the solution becomes. Each number is 10 times more powerful or less powerful than the preceding or next number. A pH of 8 is 10 times more alkaline than 7. A pH of 9 is 100 times more alkaline than 7, and so on and so forth. Another term for alkaline is basic. You've heard the terms acid and base before? Well, there you go. That's what that refers to. A couple of quick examples. Lemon juice would be an acid with a pH of 2. Baking soda is a base with a pH of 9. One thing you want to know, though, is when you ever get really, really extreme on the scale, that's when safety concerns start to arise. Extremely acidic or basic materials are what we call reactive and can actually cause severe burns. Some examples of those really extreme levels would be like automobile battery acid with a pH of zero. Also some drain cleaners can go all the way up to a pH of 14. An example of pH in action is when you mix acids and bases together into one solution, a lot of times that will cancel out their extreme effects. Much like when you mix hot water and cold water together, it will even out water temperature. Another example of pH in action would be like with multi-purpose cleaners. A lot of multi-purpose cleaners you purchase from the stores are sold as concentrates. So they're gonna be extreme on one side or the other. And then whenever you add water to them according to the ratio that's on the bottle, you bring the pH down to a milder pH to balance it out. Now I just want to say up front, I don't advocate the mixing of chemicals or cleaners. I was just trying to give you some examples of pH in action. The thing is, is that when you mix cleaners designed to do specific tasks with other cleaners, you completely change the chemical properties of it and you don't know what you got at that point. I mean, you know, you could be trying to clean grease off the stove and next thing you got, you got paint stripper or wax stripper, you know, you just never know. So leave the mixing of chemicals to the professionals. Also, a lot of people are in the habit of adding water to cleaners that they're running low on. You know, they just add some water to it so it'll last longer. You don't want to do that either because it's just going to be ineffective. You know, you could have a cleaner with a pH of 11 and you're adding all this water to it and you're bringing it down to a 7 or an 8 and it's just not going to be nearly as effective. You're just completely changing the chemical properties. It's not going to do you much good. Or, worst case scenario, if you mix the wrong things together, you could create some kind of toxic fumes they could send you to the hospital or your family, someone in the family, in the house of the hospital. So uh, whatever you do, don't mix chemicals and cleaners together. Just leave the mixing of chemicals to the professional chemists who went to school and that's what they do for a living. Okay, so having a basic understanding of this pH scale that I just went over with you is going to make you a better cleaner. Allow me to move on to the next part of the video. One of the words you've heard me mention over and over again in this video series is the word soil. And I'm not talking about the stuff outside you plant flowers in. In cleaning, soil is the unwanted substance that you're wanting to remove from whatever surface you're trying to clean. Think of coffee. Okay, coffee is a drink. We love coffee. It gets us all kinds of energy and we all get all caffeinated up and our heart rate increases, right? But when you drink coffee and you spill it on your carpet, it's soil. It needs to be cleaned up. Think of vegetable oil. Vegetable oil is some we use to cook with. Fry up some wings, I don't know, or some sausage. But we use it to cook with, but when it gets splattered all over the stove top or all over the kitchen cabinets, it's soil that needs to be cleaned and removed. A greasy soil nonetheless. So in order to use this mysterious pH scale to our advantage to tackle specific cleaning problems, you need to have a basic understanding of soil types. There are two basic categories in regards to soil types, organic and inorganic. 
When it comes to the removal of organic soils, alkaline cleaners is where it's at. Organic soils include things like food soils, so fat, grease, protein, carbohydrate. Think of oven cleaners. Oven cleaners are extremely alkaline, right? Because that those food soils are baked on inside of the oven. So you got to get something pretty alkaline, pretty strong that's really going to grip that soil so you can remove it from the surface. Other organic soils would include things like living matter. So mold, yeast, bacteria. I mentioned drain cleaners earlier, and I mentioned with drain cleaners they can go all the way up to a pH of 14. I mean, just think of all the nasty that grows inside of drains. All the living grease and mold and bacteria, all that black mamma jamma nasty stuff that can be in there. Thus, the pH 14 drain cleaner. Other organic soils would include things like petroleum oils, so motor oil, axle grease, cutting oils. Bottom line, when you encounter all of these organic soils, alkaline cleaners is what you want to use to remove them. The next type of soils would be our inorganic soils. These would include things like rust, lime scale, hard water buildup, also minerals like sand, clay, silt. For these kind of soils, acidic cleaners is where it's at. So how would you get mineral buildup off of your shower head? Soak it overnight in vinegar. Vinegar has a pH of 2.5. It's an acid. Think of battery acid. It is also, of course, an inorganic soil that you find, you know, around the terminals in your car that sits on top of your battery. An old hack your grandpa probably taught you was to pour Coca-Cola on those things, right? It's because Coca-Cola is an acid with a pH of about 2.3. So you pour the Coca-Cola on those terminals with all that battery acid around them and the stuff just melts away like butter. One last thing I need to mention and this video will be a wrap. Now that you've been equipped with this information, uh, before being overly zealous with it and just going and cleaning everything, one thing you always want to keep in mind is uh, you always want to remember the surface that you're trying to clean. At the end of the day, you always want to do your homework before you apply any type of cleaning chemical to an actual surface. There's a lot of different surface types out there. You got metals, natural stone, ceramic, rubber, vinyl, carpet, cloth, wood, etc. The type of surface you're trying to clean is going to determine the type of chemical you can put on it. You don't want to put acids on natural stone. Soft metals can be damaged by strong bases and strong acids, so you'd want to use something a little bit milder for soft metals. Bottom line, you just always want to do your homework first before you start cleaning. So that is it guys. That is video number three on our series here, the pH scale. I hope you feel empowered and equipped and confident to go out there and clean your house or whatever you want to clean. If you like this video, give it a big claim of confidence thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more great content. And until next time, go back, rewatch this video. Maybe go to the kitchen, pour yourself a nice glass of warm milk. Sit down with your computer or your smartphone. Rewatch this video and implement the information in it into your own cleaning routine and you will be well on your way to becoming the domesticated cleaning savage. Mm -hmm that I know you are.